Good evening, or late afternoon to you all, and welcome to the 2021 Virtual Scholarship and Awards Banquet. Tonight, we take a moment to celebrate and recognize Spartan Nursing students, alumni, and supporters who have made our mission possible. Your shared experiences and passion for creating a better world is what defines our college and has for generations dating back to the 1950s. As we face the trying times of today, it is the resilience found in each and every one of you that has kept us moving forward for the previous 20 months. To our donors, we cannot thank you enough. Your investment in students, research, and other college initiatives has and will continue to transform healthcare. As you will see tonight, your unwavering support for the college is what allows Spartan nurses to go on and achieve the incredible in research, in evidence-based practice, and last but not least, in communities of all kinds. While each of you carry a unique story that has guided you to support us, your motive is the same. That is to help those in need and transform healthcare delivery for all. In similar fashion, our Spartan nursing students and alumni have come to us from all walks of life, but share the same goal of creating extraordinary impact at the bedside, in their communities, and or through research. As we hear from scholarship recipients in just a moment, along with recognizing the 2020 and 2021 Alumni Award recipients, you will see just that. Tonight tells the story of the Spartan Nurse Journey, which is signified in the Life Ray sculpture at the Bot Building. The sculpture illustrates the life of a plant as it grows and spreads along the wall, which embodies the journey of education and life. We will showcase scholarship recipients in the early phase of their nursing experience, as well as alumni award recipients who, through growth and resilience, have gone on to impact many lives. And education for Michigan State University College of Nursing is what enables these journeys, and it would not be possible without the support of donors. Together, this partnership not only results in redefining healthcare, but gives voice to the voiceless an advocate for underserved and vulnerable populations, and hope for the future. Now for our scholarship recipient speakers. They will share how they are delivering on the commitment of our donors. I'd like to welcome our first student to the stage, Taylor Richards of the Accelerated BSN program. Taylor is a recipient of the 60th Anniversary Endowed Scholarship Fund. For the last 12 years, I have been on the patient side of the healthcare system. My diagnosis with type 1 diabetes at age 10 changed my life forever. While some people may think otherwise, diabetes has changed my life for the better. I was diagnosed with a disease that is extremely hard to control, comes with dangerous low blood sugars and awful highs, and potentially scary complications with no cure in immediate sight. But it made me the person I am today, and I would never change that. I'm not saying that having diabetes has been easy, it has been extremely challenging and has made my life more difficult than it may have been. However, having it has also helped me become a better person. It taught me to be responsible at an early age and how to balance my health with schoolwork and extracurriculars. I'm more resilient. It has made me compassionate and empathetic. These are skills that I will use to help other people like me. 
I know what it's like to be in a hospital room and not understand anything that's going on around you, to be given a diagnosis and told that you were never going to be able to live your life the same way. I was lucky, though, because I had an amazing healthcare team that helping me and my family, not only through those first few days, but every day since. I want people to know that there are others just like them out there who are living with this disease and not letting it stop them from doing exactly what they want. I want to be able to help the patients the way my nurses have helped me. These skills are also helping me throughout this program. I started the accelerated BSM program in May of this year. On my first day, I was a mixture of nervous and excited, mostly nervous. The instructors I've had I have learned from so far and my clinical experience have only made me more excited for this next year. I have already learned so much and I can't wait to continue my education and begin my journey as a nurse. Thank you so much to the donors of these scholarships that allow myself and my classmate to continue on this journey. Scholarships like the one I received this year really help to ease the financial burden for me and my family. It allows me to work less and put more focus on my academics. When I first started my college career, there were many scholarships offered, but as I continued beyond my freshman year, there were fewer and fewer opportunities. I am especially appreciative of the creation of scholarships that are specifically created to help me and my fellow nursing students. Thank you for that, Taylor. That was an inspiring story. I still feel the same impact when listening to their stories, even virtually. I'd like to introduce our next student speaker, Pablo Garcia Ortiz. Pablo is in the Certified Nurse Anesthetist Program and is a recipient of both the William G. and Marion E. Stuckel Endowed Scholarship and the Hayes Talley Nurse Anesthesia Endowed Scholarship. Greetings, everyone. My name is Pablo Garcia, and I'm a first-year nurse anesthesia student at Michigan State University. I have recently been awarded the Hayes Talley Nurse in Anesthesia Endowment Scholarship and the William G. Stuckel and Miriam E. Stuckel Scholarship Fund in Nursing. Unfortunately, our scholarship ceremony could not be held in person this year. However, it is with great pleasure and gratitude that I stand before all the donors and staff members today on behalf of all the scholarship recipients for this year. I wanted to say thank you. Thank you to all the donors present virtually today for your immense generosity and selflessness. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for giving back to the Michigan State College of Nursing. We as a school would not be as prestigious without your monetary commitment to our school and to us as students. As a first year nurse anesthesia student, I can confidently say I am glad I chose to come to Michigan State. My professors have been nothing short of caring and encouraging to myself and my classmates. Although classes and tests are rigorous, my professors have done a fantastic job to help me master all the basic concepts of pharmacology and physiology in nurse anesthesia. I am grateful and honored to be a part of this program. Other than being a full-time student, I also work part-time as a nurse. I have worked as an ICU nurse for the past six years. Much of my success in my nursing career is a credit to my mother and all her sacrifices she has made to help me succeed. As a little kid in my native country of Guatemala, my mother left everything she had to come and live in the United States by herself in the hopes of bringing my siblings and I with her in order to prepare us for a better future here. As a young kid, I watched my mother further her own education here in the USA by pursuing and achieving a doctorate degree. Raising a family of four while working 60 plus hours on her doctorate degree was no easy task. I watched her sacrifice countless times, her time, her weekends, her social life, her sleep, and every other aspect of her life as she had to manage her heavy doctorate work while working full time as a laboratory assistant, while still somehow making sure my brothers and I were fed and well taken care of. I can specifically remember my usual after school routine of taking the bus straight from middle school to go to my mom's office and help her clean beakers, flasks, and test tubes, along with any other small busy lab work in order to help her stay on track of her school projects. I remember seeing her struggle greatly through the adversity of those four years of her life. 
But through the adversity and through God's help, she stayed committed and dedicated to her goal of completing her doctorate studies to provide a better future to my family through her degree. My mom has instilled in me the confidence of pursuing goals in life and that every goal that is worth achieving in life requires sacrifices, commitment, and much effort. I would not be here today without God's grace. More specifically, I would not be here without my mom's grit, hard work, and determination. My goal as a future nurse anesthetist is to work for a mid-sized community hospital. I want my future patients to know that they are receiving the highest quality type of healthcare in their local rural hospital setting. I also greatly aspire to use my future skills throughout the mission field, domestically and internationally. Following my call to nursing, I want to give back through anesthesia care to people who are in great need of medical care here in the United States and abroad as opportunities arise. There are many organizations domestically and internationally that need nurse anesthetists to assist in life-saving surgeries to people who have no access to those procedures otherwise. The scholarships awarded and celebrated today will help us students be able to worry less about our financial responsibilities and focus more on our education and training. From the bottom of my heart, I wanted to again thank each and every one of our donors who have contributed and invested in our precious education and profession as future healthcare providers. Thank you for believing in the Michigan State University College of Nursing. And thank you for your time and attention. I can assure you, your investment in us will be well stewarded. Thank you, Pablo. With over 100 scholarship recipients, I really do wish we had more time to hear all of their stories as they all bring unique experiences and obstacles with them. Let us move along in our program this evening. Recently, the college covered the extraordinary work of our alumni through the Neighborhood Nurses series, which you can learn more about on our website and social media channels. In this series, we show those Spartan nurses who are returning to their respective rural and urban communities to provide world-class care upon completion of their programs. Tonight, we will share their stories through a series of four short videos. Tiffany Harris, Brenda Kretschmer, Angela Floyd, and Tamara Lemons practice in different disciplines of nursing, yet they share the same passion for treating those in their communities. Let's take a look. So I'm from the west side of Detroit. It's kind of cool for me because I grew up in the Southfield Detroit area. I see people that I've been neighbors with, went to high school with, all kinds of situations. Detroiters are hardworking, we're driven, we make things happen, we're innovators. My name is Tiffany Harris. I'm a registered nurse in the emergency department at Ascension Providence Southfield. Day to day in the emergency department changes. That's the beauty of being there. But every day I know that I'm gonna have a load of patients and I need to stabilize them and make sure that they're safe and ready to go. The bulk of my patient population is African Americans. It's no secret that we face disparities within the healthcare system, so it's important to me to get my community to come and get care. Michigan State University drives their nursing students. They want to make sure that you know the best so that you can be the best, and I think that that has always stuck with me. My name is Tiffany Harris and I'm a neighborhood nurse. Well, I chose to practice in the Thumb of Michigan because this is where I grew up. I was close to this area in Pigeon, Michigan. You're really involved with your community. Everywhere you go, you know, you know someone. I think about a patient that I already saw this morning. You know, I'm looking at her and I, I care for her whole family. And you're just so connected to the patients and to the community. And I think you really get to know your patients even better. So day-to-day -day tasks would be seeing patients from birth to end of life. So it's definitely with family practice a, a huge variety 
of patients that we see in a day. I feel that Michigan State College of Nursing prepared me in so many ways. And the biggest way is starting nursing school and having that solid base for assessment skills. I am Brenda Kretschmer and I am a neighborhood nurse. My name is Angela Floyd, and I'm a clinical nurse specialist at Henry Ford Hospital. I am from Detroit, Michigan. I was born and raised on the west side of Detroit. I currently work in a neurointensive care unit with neurosurgical critical care patients. So these are patients who are suffering from strokes, post-operative craniotomies, and are requiring the highest level of care. If I had to describe Detroit in terms of character, I would describe them as strong. It's a city that has been through a lot, riots, poverty, just tons of issues, and still maintain to be true to themselves and the people here still love and care about Detroit and they're still here pouring themselves into Detroit. The challenges that Detroit faces in terms of health care is getting that large African-American population into the hospitals to get the care that they need and to trust that the things that we are providing for them are appropriate. Michigan State gave me the knowledge base, the foundations to really be a clinical nurse specialist and to really impact the care that we provide for our patients. My name is Angela Floyd and I'm a neighborhood nurse. So I'm from a small community, Tipton, Michigan. Most people in Tipton are very proud of where they're from. I would say a hardworking group of people overall. There's a lot of farmland surrounding the Hillsdale area. So the patients are actually very similar here to where I'm from. My name is Tamara Lemons, and I am a certified registered nurse anesthetist at Hillsdale Hospital. Day to day as a CRNA, we are responsible for performing preoperative assessments on patients, providing anesthesia care from start to finish, looking over our patients in the recovery room postoperatively. We're also responsible for a variety of tasks outside of the operating room. I think the program is strenuous at Michigan State and very detail driven. I am so appreciative of it. I feel like it gave me a great background, especially my didactics were strong up front, having all of that more up front in the program and my clinical background was good as well. My name is Tamara Lemons and I am a neighborhood nurse. As you can see, the reach of Spartan nurses is far and wide, and with the educational tools provided from the college, they are making a tremendous impact on patients through their relentless commitment. Now it is time to recognize our scholarship recipients and donors who have made their educational dreams possible. Please enjoy the following video. The following students are recipients of the 60th Anniversary Endowed Scholarship Fund. Rachel Cornell, Kimberly Jones, Jacob Ooms, Clayton Redding, Taylor Richards, Hassam Alden Varpai, Sarah Wagoner, and Alexandra Wallace. Vanessa Johnson, the Angela and Richard Strawn Nursing Endowed Scholarship. Layla Marashi, Behavioral Health Nurse Practitioner Scholarship. Asad Mahmood, Captain Sean Grimes Nursing Endowed Scholarship. Victoria Matowski, Carol Robinson Beals Nursing Endowed Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the College of Nursing Alumni Association Endowed Scholarship Fund. Tucker Anson and Han Nguyen. Haley Hathaway, the Conlon Werewine Endowed Scholarship for Graduate Students. Anne Marie Titus, the Diana Rausch Memorial Nursing Endowed Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Dorothy and Edward Hertel Scholarship. Fauzia Yurima and Leslie Elizalde. Nicole Rose, the Dr. Charles and Marjorie A. Glioza Endowed Fund for Nurses and Caregivers. Kay Leon, the Dr. John F. Dunkel Memorial Endowed Scholarship. The following students are the recipients of the Elizabeth Blay Maison Endowed Scholarship. Jenna Brown, Olivia Butenhus, Haley Hitchcock, Nicole Horton, Eleanor Haas, Jasmine Johnson, Megan Murphy, Bailey Phillips, Maddie Young, 
and Caitlin Zaremba. Sarah Rachel Conless, the Florence C. Kempf Nursing Endowed Scholarship. Irene Mayo, the Florence Nothstein Endowed Scholarship for Nursing. The following students are recipients of the George and Margaret Lorimer Parsons Nursing Endowed Scholarship. Paul Bradley, Amy Fogel, Jessica Henschel, Sydney Knoll, Carolyn Luddy, Brian Mueller, Michael Stachelski, Fazia Tabate, Hassam Alden Varpai, Joshua Winoieki, Tanya Brooks, the Gilbert and Leona Schulman Endowed Scholarship, Pablo Garcia Ortiz, the Hayes Talley Nurse Anesthesia Endowed Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Helen Calder Endowed Nursing Scholarship. Grace Caldwell, Megan Sirik, Carolina Zedich, and Megan Witt. Lauren Adams, the Helen M. Kelly Endowed Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Helene Fold Health Trust Endowed Scholarship for Baccalaureate Nursing Students. Carol Abby Mensa, Schaefer Basselin, Carrie Marco Tulio, Mallory Marshall, Caitlin Trevino, and Sydney Trombley. The following students are recipients of the Inez and Gladys Harmon Endowed Scholarship. Jillian McKenna and Jenna Payek. Isabel Miazros, Janet M. Wendorf Endowed Scholarship. Kaylin McDaniel, the Janice and Alton Granger Nursing Endowed Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the John A. Sandin II and the Dr. John A. Sandin III Endowed Scholarship. Kristen Butler, Virginia Frederick, Gary Laskowski, Dominique Pearson, and Elizabeth Wielgos. Tyler Garrett, the Judge Paula Manderfield Endowed Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Kathleen Nowicki Schwartz and Michael Schwartz Endowed Fellowship. Ikachai Kantawang and Teresa Ong. The following students are recipients of the Linda J. Spence Endowed Fellowship. Callie Harris, Lauren Pagao, and Carla Palmer. Susan Pell. Marjorie A. Holmes Endowed Graduate Student Scholarship Fund. Maria Medina, the Mary Milner Estes Endowed Nursing Scholarship. Drew Fro, Nancy A. Mulrennan Agents Nursing Endowed Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Rao and Joyce Coretti Nursing Endowed Scholarship. Jacqueline Alvarez and Tyler Garrett. Jordan Crawford, the Retired Faculty Endowed Scholarship, Jessica Pahalik, Tammy Teresa Strohmeyer Memorial Endowed Fund, Imari Tony, the Vermish Regnier Nursing Endowed Scholarship, Melinda Martignetti, William and Angeline Keener Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the William G. and Marion E. Stuckel Endowed Scholarship, Benjamin Brower, Ashley Cantu, Megan Donovan, Pablo Garcia Ortiz, Kendall Piper, and Vanessa Vadasi. The following students are recipients of the Board of Nursing Scholarship. Jamie Guild, Lauren Latif, Surrender Singh, and Madison Zagaki, Wakira Suriyuang, Carol J. Larson Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the College of Nursing Scholarship. Felicia Beasley, Megan Foley, Olivia Gross, and Luke Lenscheid. 
The following students are recipients of the CVS Foundation MSN Scholarship Fund. Angela DeVore, Irene Mayo, and Bailey Secord. Allison Danto, the Dean Carpenter Memorial Scholarship. Kristen Butler, the Dr. Barbara Piper Nursing Scholarship. Caitlin Paquette, the Sergeant Leonard Bernard Graham III's Nursing Scholarship. Jasmine Johnson, Knowing Diversity's Essential Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Susan Vardabedian Lucan Nursing Scholarship. Mackenzie DeSluver and Renee Garcia. Nia Buchanan, the Terry Brennan Vio and Robert Vio Undergraduate Student Scholarship. Bridget Owens, the Visiting Nurses Scholarship. Madeline Wood, the William and Margaret Alberts Nursing Scholarship. Congratulations to you all, and thank you once again to our donors for making this all possible. It's now time to recognize the 2020 and 2021 Alumni Award recipients. These Spartan nursing alumni have gone above and beyond in the field of research, service, and other areas to elevate the college as what we know today. A large part of our reputation is built on the work of our alumni and how they choose to represent the college. The following individuals are a perfect example of this. Please enjoy these videos. My name is Ashley Myers and I am a clinical nurse educator at Sparrow Hospital. My job includes a number of things, which I love that it's different every day. So we focus on clinical competence of our nursing caregivers and uh, interdisciplinary education is sometimes part of that as well. So new caregiver orientation, clinical competence of our existing staff. I help with continuing education opportunities, particularly uh, related to pain management and substance misuse. So that's, that's my typical day-to-day -day job. I went to nursing school at MSU and they really instilled this lifelong learner approach to my career. So from, from the beginning, day one, I knew that I was going to stay involved and engaged. I was going to try and promote practice. I was going to take all the opportunities that were offered to me that I could, including volunteering for ASPMN to help revise national guidelines related to opioid safety. I think that our community um, as a whole has a stigma towards substance misuse and the treatment of it. And so I think that in itself is a barrier that I'm really passionate about um, trying to improve. Then furthermore, creating a sustainable plan for our community that is 24-7. So we have drug disposal drop boxes at seven of our Sparrow locations now. Our Sparrow hospitals are open 24-7. When you're coming in to get your routine labs or anything else that you might need, you can feel free to bring in your medications and unused ointments and inhalers and drop them in our drug disposal box knowing that it's not gonna end up in our soil, in our water, out in the community in the hands of folks that really should not be having it. I am one of the co-founders of Mama's Mobile Milk. Mama's Mobile Milk is a service that will provide milk. Um, we have, it's a community-driven project. Our volunteers are trained by us, the lactation consultants, on how to safely handle and transport milk. But it is for babies that are in the NICU. So if a person has tra transportation issues, they don't have to worry about getting their milk to their baby. Human milk is health prevention. So it starts by making sure that people, little humans that are born, have the best that as a community we work to provide. I am a board director for the United States Breastfeeding Association. USBC is an organization that informs advocacy um, around protecting human milk feeding. And um, so as a director, I help to, to govern. It's not a working board, it's more of a governing board. I've always worked in the community and the hospital to you know, create a healthy communities um, thriving communities and um, really operationalize what equity really means. My name is Sakita Lewis Johnson, BSN, 
Class of 1997. Congratulations to both Sakita Lewis Johnson and Ashley Myers on receiving the Alumni Service Award. I'm very proud of the impact you are making in the community. Now we will recognize the 2020 and 2021 recent Graduate Achievement Award winners who are off to a remarkable start in their careers, having achieved a great deal in just a short time. Enid Hoja, and I am currently a management fellow with Trinity Health, which means I'm being precepted by the, by the executive leadership um, at St. Mary Mercy Livonia under our president CEO, and also at the system level. And I'm involved in a variety of different projects in our community health and well-being space, and also in our acute space. I actually graduated in 2020 from Columbia University with my master's in healthcare administration. And during that time there, I was also a nurse at Yale Health System and also completed a residency um, with United Children's Fund, which is also known as UNICEF. So UNICEF is part of the uh, United Nations and it specifically focuses on uh, children. So it's also known as the United Children's Fund and they provide guidance for policies for different governments throughout the world, NGOs and private organizations in how to create programs that are meaningful to provide the needs that are necessary to children. So that could be health, that could be education, that could be nutrition. And my role there was to really support how we can holistically create guidance for programs to, to bring all these different silos together and, and creating meaningful programs that encompass all of those needs. Being a student of the College of Nursing at Michigan State was fundamental in my ability to be a nurse that is compassionate and that is that provides safe care to our patient, but also to have that, that, that mentality of always exploring what else nursing can provide and what, what else we can do with our nursing degree, not just providing care at the bedside, but much, you know, at different spaces and leadership and policy, government, etc. My name is Enid Hoja, BSN 15. My name is Johnny Choi. I work at the Cleveland Clinic on their surgical organ transplant intensive care unit. Essentially, we take care of any patient with any surgical complication. So it could be from a mother baby surgical complication to a multivisual organ transplant. So transplanting uh, multiple organs at one time to an ear, nose, throat, you know, face surgery. So we take care of them pre and post op, and then usually send them on their way. The end of the year it was really challenging you know as, as nurse students as a whole we were asked to adapt to new online learning styles we were adapting to lockdown learning that our graduation our semester would be cut short and i think most of all like, as nursing students we were facing the reality that we'd be entering the workforce in the middle of the pandemic um, quite different than any other new grads had ever done before you know, as for me, I felt right away that it was an opportunity for me to get involved. So right away I was volunteering over at Spiro, doing just screenings for doctors and nurses coming into work every day. And then I was doing COVID swabbing, so swabbing people for tests, just in parking lots, things like that. And then like my biggest role I'd say was as I had more downtime during the end of school, I was able to work at my other job near uh, Detroit. We transitioned right away to a COVID-19 ICU, and I was able to, in between classes, go there during the day and help out the nurses um, with their everyday roles. And I just felt like that was a way that I could immerse myself and help the most during the end of school. And then after school, we were allowed to work early. So um, I kind of transitioned that role, and I had gotten a job down south of the Cleveland Clinic. Towards the end of your college at Michigan State in the nursing program, they really focus on evidence-based practice, meaning how can we take the best evidence and our clinical expertise to produce the best outcome. So those are, you know, things that you would maybe do outside of work. And so I was actually able to, during orientation, collaborate with one of my preceptors on doing a small study with hypothermia and continuous renal replacement therapy in the intensive care unit. And so we actually were able to change our protocol at the Kuhn Clinic um, in my first couple weeks of working there. And I remember just her asking me a lot of questions about the research project process. And I was able just to use a lot of my experience here. So that was really cool to see that. Jonathan Choi, BSN 2020. 
Congratulations, Enid and Johnny. May you go on to achieve much more in your already impressive journeys. And finally, we recognize the 2020 and 2021 Distinguished Alumni Award winners who have both led admirable careers. I've had the personal pleasure of getting to know Dr. Linda Kyleman and Dr. Kathy Bobet. Their contributions to the field of nursing are something that we should all strive for. They truly do embody what it means to be a Spartan nurse. done a number of service activities with where I've been on the board of various things. One of the groups I just recently got off of is a subgroup of Academy Health, just health services researchers, and um, it's interdisciplinary for nursing research. We have the unglorious name of ERGNI, and I was on the board. I really like that group though because it's not only nurses, it's health economists, it's public policy people, and we're doing the research that actually can change healthcare delivery, hopefully for the better. We're trying to figure out how to improve care for patients and lower costs, and it's going to take an interdisciplinary group to do that. I, I think I became a nurse because um, my mom wasn't so good at doing blood in sick kids, and so she would always send them to me when they were sick or hurt and, and I sort of helped take care of them as the oldest and so it just seemed natural. One of the things that I do now is research. I research the value of how nurses contribute to patient care until we research and demonstrate the value of how it is we make a difference. We remain invisible and so one of the things I'm really proud of is that we recently did a study, my colleagues and I, where we demonstrated that nurses could reduce readmissions um, on some units between one and three percent, which meant a savings to the hospital of one to three million dollars. One of the outcomes of that is we actually got published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. They almost never publish a team of only nurses, and so I'm very proud of that publication. My name is Lynn Keilman, and I'm an associate professor and a gerontological nurse practitioner here in the College of Nursing. I came here because of the land grant mission of the university in giving back to the people that live in the area and the students that come here to learn and start their professional careers. One of the things that I've accomplished while being here at the university and in the college is funding for Geriatric Education Center of Michigan for about 20 years where I was a curriculum expert, and I and the team, which included geriatricians, physicians, and social workers, and we would go to various facilities and organizations around the state and talk to them about appropriate ways to take care of older adults. Because most people, unless they go into gerontology, are not educated about older individuals, especially those 85 years and older. I think that the most rewarding aspect of being a gerontology nurse practitioner is really working with, number one, older patients and their families, and especially helping them to live quality of lives every day despite their diagnosis, and then being with them at the end of life and providing palliative care and hospice services for them. And the second thing would be working with students and watching them grow and change and become my colleagues. Currently have a couple projects going. I am working with Dr. Masakato, who is in the College of Human Medicine, who has a National Institute of Health grant on looking at particulate matter along highways and freeways. Um, and older adults that live in housing along heavily traveled roads and how particulate matter from exhaust in their lungs causes high blood pressure. And I and some of my national colleagues are doing videos for nurse practitioners working with people living with dementia and neuropsychiatric symptoms 
and also caregivers. And both those things at this time are pretty exciting. My name is Linda Keilman, MSN in Gerontology 1989. To all of you at home, thank you once again for being a part of this special evening. And a special thanks to our generous donors for your commitment to us. I am glad you all were able to join us. This event was planned and produced by WKAR and the Office of Development and Alumni Relations in the College of Nursing. Have a great evening and stay healthy. And go green! <laughs>